Hey everyone, and good Wednesday evening to you. It is Weather for Weather Geeks. This is the video that focuses mostly on eastern Ohio and western PA, but we talk about weather news elsewhere across the country when appropriate. And I wanted to start out this evening with today being another big day in weather history across our area. I wanted to talk about the blizzard of 1978. I'm going to get the camera out of the way here, and this weather map that is the background of uh, my uh, kind of my title screen here is the weather map from this date back in 19. 78 as the great blizzard uh, rolled on across Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Michigan, uh, one of the strongest low pressure systems to ever traverse the Buckeye State, was rolling through right around uh, this time, 44 years ago today. Now, I was born about a month after the blizzard of 78, and I was born in southwest Ohio, closer to Dayton. Uh, growing up, I was always under the impression I was born right after the blizzard of 78 uh, from the stories that my relatives would tell. Yeah, we had to drive through the snow drifts and it took us 12 hours to get down there to see in the hospital and that sort of thing. As it turns out, I was born about a month after the blizzard. But that being said, this was such an impactful storm for our region that the, uh, the drifts and the tough travel conditions lingered a fair amount after the actual storm. A month after, meh, maybe, maybe not. If if you were around in late February of 1978 and you remember roads still being tough four weeks after the blizzard of 78, uh, be sure and let me know. One of the things that's kind of surprising when it comes to uh, snowfall amounts in the blizzard of 78 was we actually, in eastern Ohio and western PA, we were not in the bullseye for snowfall totals. That was way off to our west. A foot plus in Indiana, northwest Ohio, a lot of Michigan. Michigan really got pummeled with the heavy snow. In eastern Ohio and western PA, the problem was not necessarily the amount of snow that fell from the sky. It was the wind, and that's because this was the strongest low pressure system uh, on record for our region with uh, barometric pressure uh, records being broken in Cleveland and Youngstown. Here in uh, Youngstown, 961 millibars, or 28.39 inches of mercury. That pressure is comparable to a Category 3 hurricane. Now, the wind speeds, since we're over land and there's a lot of friction, the wind speeds were not equivalent to a Category 3 hurricane, but the pressure was, and we had wind gusts of consistently topping out over 50 and 60 miles per hour. So the drifting was just enormous, and that caused uh, you know just things to be paralyzed for a time in our region 44 years ago today tonight as well this season we've seen nothing like that we haven't seen a blizzard that is on par with 1978 since then we've had bigger snowstorms but we haven't had bigger wind producing snowstorms since then and for the season we're running just 3.7 inches behind average now after a pretty snowy last couple of weeks Places such as Erie and Cleveland, a little bit closer to Lake Erie, still some pretty decent snowfall deficits for the season up near the short line and closer to the primary snow belt. Beautiful sunset this evening, not a cloud in the sky, and with a crystal clear sky, it is turning cold in a hurry. As of this recording at 7.30 p.m., we already have some places flirting with zero. Current temperature at the airport, again, about 7.26, 11 degrees, one of the colder spots in the lower 48 states aside from some parts of New England this evening. Now there is somewhat, somewhat milder air off to our west. This will make inroads over the next uh, 24 hours, but any warm-up is could be a brief one and we won't even touch freezing tomorrow afternoon. The weather service in both Cleveland and Pittsburgh did hoist a wind chill advisory for tonight. I think it's a borderline situation as far as wind chills meeting advisory criteria tonight. There's not much of a breeze. But with temperatures slipping below zero in most communities and a five or six mile per hour breeze, you can get a wind chill down to minus 10, maybe even a little bit colder in some spots uh, by the end of the night tonight. Here's one model depiction of some of the numbers. And, you know, this is just model information, and, and certainly there'll be some localized variations. But as we get up tomorrow morning, some localized wind chills of minus 8, minus 10, minus 12, that's going to be a possibility. This, of course, raises... Uh, some people's suspicions as far as uh, two-hour delays for schools and that sort of thing tomorrow morning. I, I can't tell you what's going to happen there. That's outside of my area of expertise. Um, but when it comes to the criteria for a wind chill advisory, this is pretty borderline tonight. Uh, not much in the way of a breeze. But no matter which way you slice it, it's cold. Clouds will increase on our Thursday. 
Uh, we have allowed now for a late day snow shower and flurry, and light snow or flurries may stick around into early Friday morning. Uh, probably some small accumulations and some localized slick spots, something to watch out for, even though amounts are going to be pretty meager. This front then kind of gets held up as it approaches the east uh, coast Friday night, and then big time storm will graze parts of the northeast. This is a nightmare of a forecast from Boston to New York City and points south. They are on the razor's edge between a big snowstorm and a near miss. I mean, 25 to 50 miles can make all the difference in the world for coastal New England and Long Island and even down towards the Jersey Shore. Uh, this is a very, very tough forecast. The potential is there for a high-end snowstorm. Potential is also there that this just is barely a miss and they don't see much at all. Here locally, amounts with our snow showers and flurries Thursday night, early Friday should be under an inch. Don't discount the possibility, though, of some slick conditions early in the day on Friday with every flake of that potentially sticking. Now, again, this is just one model. Um, this model, the European, would suggest it's still a big hit for Boston and uh, Providence and Cape Cod. Uh, probably a moderate snowstorm for New York City and maybe a near miss for Philadelphia, but this is just one model. Uh, they're going to be watching the models like a hawk uh, tonight into tomorrow and even into Friday in the Northeast. Let's look ahead towards next week. Uh, the pattern will start to change next week as uh, finally our trough in the east starts to break down and a big trough digs out west. And so it will warm up next week. Uh, we're talking mid-40s for highs for at least a day or two. There's also going to be, I think, an interesting severe weather threat middle of next week somewhere in the Mississippi Valley as this ejects out of the, the Rockies and taps into some Gulf moisture. Uh, dew points will start to come up and yeah, there could be a, a, a late January or very early February severe weather episode for us as this front comes east. Some shenanigans might ensue around here. We might see uh, a transition back to colder weather by next weekend, so about 10 days from now. That transition may be a bumpy ride with uh, maybe rain changing to some sort of frozen precipitation at some point late next week. We don't know the details at this point, but potential is there for some sort of a abrupt uh, change to cold weather and frozen precipitation towards the end of next week. But until we get to that point, yeah, it still looks mild. I've got uh, now 46 in the forecast for next Wednesday. Our snowpack will start to really compact and melt some. Uh, we'll get a chance to... Uh, you know, maybe see the grass in a few spots, um, but I don't think the entire snowpack is likely to melt because, again, I do think it turns colder again. Uh, not as cold as our current pattern, but colder by that first weekend of February coming up in about 10 days. That's it for me tonight. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll see you back here with an update on the weekend forecast and everything else you need to know tomorrow evening. Same time, same